Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now a lot of you who've been watching this channel recently have noticed I've been tying a lot of Great Smoky Mountain patterns. And that's all well and good. They can be great fish catchers, but sometimes you get a little bored tying a gray body with brown and grizzly hackle. Sometimes you just want to experiment. So this one I'm tying today, two days ago it didn't exist. Now how it came about is I was chatting with one of my YouTube friends, Otto Julian. He's got a tech channel with video and photography. He mentioned one of the recent flies. He thought it looked like a dragon. And I thought, that's kind of a cool name for a fly. So next time I come up with something, I'll call it Otto's Dragon. And he got a little kick out of that. So this morning when I sat down at the bench, I knew I wanted to tie a hair wing streamer. So I took a lot of different materials, different colors, mixed and matched. You know, it went through a few iterations until I found something that I think looks kind of cool. It was definitely fun to tie. And who knows, it might be effective. But that is one of the great things about fly tying. You can just sit down and create something, you know, out of thin air, something out of your imagination. Who knows who's gonna come up with the next Copper John? It might be you. So I think you're gonna like tonight's pattern. It was pretty fun to tie, so let's get started. There it is in the vise, Otto's Dragon. Now I'm gonna be tying this on a size six. It's a streamer hook, five X long, two extra heavy. So that's a pretty beefy looking hook right there. I'm gonna put down a base of red thread. This is a six aught. Now let's tie in the tail. Yellow saddle hackle. Just some of this cheap, strong saddle hackle. I will pull about, it's a pretty substantial tail. So, you know, 15 or 20 fibers right here. Just pull them out. Measure a length, maybe a little bit more than a hook gap. Don't let them spin around on me right there. That's gonna be fine. Now what is cool, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting a good taper right here, getting a step down because we have a pretty fluffy underbody or body. And the first part of that body is a red butt. So I'm gonna use, this is a small chenille. You could probably get away with a medium, but I think it would be just a little bit too fluffy. So I'm gonna catch this in right back here to where I'm gonna start wrapping it. And it's only gonna be about that, that wide right there. So you might wanna fluff that up a little bit. And we'll probably get two or three wraps. Just whatever you think looks good. I think that's three right there. That will be definitely noticeable on this dark purple rest of the body. Okay, got a couple of wraps right there to catch that in. Watch the point of your hook. Now let's snip this off. Sometimes this makes a little bit of a mess when you snip it off. You get some stray fibers going all over the place. That's not too bad right there. Okay. Next component, Mylar tinsel. This is a size, I believe it's a medium. It's actually size 14, gold and silver on each side, on either side. I'm gonna tie it with the gold side down so that when I flip it to wrap, you will be seeing the gold side. So just catch that in to right back here where we're gonna start wrapping it. Now let's catch in some purple chenille. The main part of the body here is the purple. So what you'll do when you have the chenille, you just strip off, you know, a few fibers on the first couple of millimeters. And then it makes it easier to catch in. Now let's take our thread. I could snip that excess off right there or just put a few wraps around it and take my thread on up here to where we're going to finish wrapping this body. Now remember, we do have a throat and quite a bit of hair for the wing, so you don't wanna take your thread up too high, up too far forward, I mean. So let's just wrap this purple chenille. It's not gonna be quite as wide and as thick as the red was. If you noticed, we put a couple of those reds right on top of each other, 
and that's fine. We want a bigger pronounced butt on it. Okay, when you get your purple body on up front, go ahead and catch this off. A couple of wraps right there, maybe another tight one or two. Now let's snip off this chenille. Now let's wrap our rib. Now you could counter wrap this. I'm going to wrap it the same way I did the chenille. And then some of these wraps will naturally go into these grooves. Okay, when you've got your flat mylar tinsel up to the front, a couple of wraps to secure that. And what I like to do, it's a mess if this unravels on you, I'll fold it back, throw a couple wraps in front of it, and then another one behind it just to really lock it in. So let's snip that off. Got a few scraggly chenille fibers floating around. But let's do our throat. Our throat is that same yellow saddle hackle. About maybe a few less than we used for the tail. Okay, I think that's going to be enough right there. And just catch it in with a couple of loose wraps at first. We can pick our length after we've we got it laying there. So is that the length I want? That's actually exactly how much I want. So just make sure it's laying on the top or the bottom, it's the top of the fly when it's upside down, and a couple of tight wraps to secure it. Now let's get in here and snip off this excess as close as we can get it. Okay, that was a little more uncooperative than usual, but we got it, and I'll just bury those those, you know, butt ends in. So we've got a decent looking throat to match our tail there. Now the next thing we want is a squirrel tail. The underwing right here. So just take your regular squirrel tail and a fairly significant chunk. Remember we're going to top it with some white bucktail. So take a fairly significant chunk of squirrel tail, put that in your stacker, and Get those tips lined up pretty well. Now some of these squirrel hairs are small, so if I pull this, I'm gonna be pulling some of the short ones out, and that's fine. So I always start with more squirrel tail than I think I'm gonna need, because a lot of it is gonna pull out. So we want it about, oh, to the bend of the hook, maybe not quite as far back as the back of that tail. So make sure your thread is hanging where you want the back of your head to be. So a pinch wrap right there, maybe a second one before you really pull it tight. Now I'm going to pull it tight kind of up on my side back here. So I like that. I'm going to put a couple more medium wraps right here before I go back up front. And these are pretty tight wraps. So I don't want it to spin around on me. It might a little bit if you're not careful. So what you can do here, just I'm going to do this in a couple of cuttings. We're going to try and get a taper. It's not always easy to do, but if you can, right here, you'll have a cleaner looking head in the end. Okay, I think we can work with that. Our wing is still sitting on top for the most part. Now let's put it a little bit tighter and tighter right here. Now what you can also do is try and push these up with your fingernails or a bodkin, whatever you got. It might give you a little bit more to work with if you're going to try and trim them. See I've got those butt ends sticking up right there and I might be able to trim it just a little bit closer by doing that. If not, Hey, don't worry about it. We got a little bit of topping just on top of this squirrel. So it's white bucktail. Now this in my hand right now, that's probably more than I need. I probably want about half that. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my stacker. Okay, and when I pull it out, I will probably thin it down by about half. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull some of these out right there. I'll get the, the shorter ones out. And did that thin it down enough? Yeah, I think so. I think, well, let's, let's thin it a little bit more. I'm gonna grab it closer to the end and then pull some of those out. So I'm just pulling some of the shorter ones out. Now measure your length about just the same or a little bit longer than, than the squirrel tail underneath it. I'm gonna take my thread back up right here and then catch this on the same way we did the squirrel tail. Just a couple of medium wraps right there. Check your position, make sure you're not spinning around. And I think we're okay here. Don't want it to lay that low. So what, what you can do right here, I should have probably done this with a squirrel tail before I put the, the white on top. Lift it up and put a wrap or two underneath. See that propped it up just a little bit. Let's do it one more time right there. Now our wing is sticking up about what we want right there. So we can go back up front and put a few more tighter wraps right here. And we'll reach in here and cut this as close as we can, also at a slight angle. That way we can get our tapered head. So these are pretty tight wraps right here, going right back to the eye, and I'm gonna build this ramp going back up. So I think that's gonna work right there, maybe just a couple wraps. I've got a little white showing under my red thread head there, but I bet you the whip finish will take care of that. Maybe, we'll see, if we get lucky. Why, yes, it did. We got lucky. So I'm going to reach my scissors in there and just slide that in. I'm going to put a drop of head cement on this thing. And Otto's Dragon Hair Wing Streamer is done. So that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. This is a pretty fun pattern to tie. We'll see how it does on the river, but I can't imagine it'll do too bad. So that's all. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.